with unity. Negotiations are going really well. Be cool. The end result will be worth it. Dr. Fox, what, what would be the best end result in your, in your opinion? Well, we would like to see um, a comprehensive free trade agreement with the United States. We've begun our discussions also with Australia and New Zealand, and we've begun looking to see whether it would be possible for the UK to accede to the CPTPP agreement. Uh, we believe that we need global trade liberalization. Uh, we all come to it from a slightly different perspective, but as we leave the European Union, we want to make it clear that we are a, an outward-looking, open, free-trading country, and we're looking to have agreements with countries that share our strategic vision. So, so would Britain agree to no tariffs, no subsidies, as President Trump uh, suggested? Well, we would have an ability to do that, which we don't at the present time. And if you take, for example, car tariffs at the present, um, where there's a differential between the tariffs applied to European cars coming to the States and American cars coming to Europe, we would have the ability to unilaterally make that choice for ourselves. But of course, it would be dependent on uh, the U.S. making its own adjustments to tariffs on things like light trucks, where we face a 25% tariff right. coming into the U.S. So that's what agreements are about and uh, if we're able to reach a position that's that's of mutual advantage and I'm speaking at the Heritage Foundation this morning and pointing out that from Adam Smith onwards the whole point of trade is, is mutual benefit if we can achieve that mutual benefit uh, in a way that also helps liberalize the global trading environment and helps us if you like write the rules for that global economy of the future it's not just an economic but it's a strategic gain for both of us right and that strategic gain obviously hopefully comes at some point soon sooner rather than later but we are in a period right now of uncertainty where we're not sure where this goes you've got a, a handful of companies this morning when they give guidance saying well we're expecting higher commodities expenses you know we're not sure where the trade issues are going so what kind of an impact does this uncertainty period have do you think in the broader economic growth story um, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've done an interview and people have said it's a very uncertain period just now. I must have missed the period of certainty that's gone past us. Uh, yes, there are a lot of potential disruptions out there. Um, there are problems inside uh, the European Union, of course. Uh, some tensions, for example, with the new Italian government. We've got the wider issue of what's happening in global tariffs. That all needs to be resolved. But I think that the, the best way to look at that is for us all to go back to first principles and recognize that, that uh, having an open trading system has not only been the means by which we've taken a billion people out of abject poverty globally, but trade is, an, is, a, is a means to spreading prosperity, which provides better political cohesion and political stability, and that's the building block of our global security. So countries like the United States and the UK, who have always had this strong belief that uh, an open trading system isn't just an end in itself, but is actually, in the end, a means of underpinning our own security and stability. We need to get those arguments out there uh, and make them even more loudly than we've done in the past. What do, you, 